Hi, welcome to Surviving Schizophrenia with Stephen. My name is Stephen. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Today, I'm here with Congressman Tony Coelho. Congressman Coelho served in the United States House of Representatives and was the primary author and sponsor of the Americans with Disabilities Act. I have personally benefited from this legislation and I hope you enjoy this video. Hi. Hi, Stephen. How are you? I'm good. How are you, Congressman? Okay. Good. I'm doing great. I'm glad to have you on my channel. This is absolutely amazing. Well, you, anytime you have any questions or concerns, I have to do is call. You know that. Thank you. So how are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Yeah. I read your, some of your, um, listen to them, I should say, listen to some of your videos. Thank um, you. I, uh, you know, I, I'm just about 80, and so I've had seizures for 60-some years and went through all the experiences that people go through. Right. So I can identify with some of the stuff that you're going through. Um, the most important thing is uh, uh, believing in yourself. Yeah. And uh, you come across as doing that at times. Um, and I think that's that's important. I. I tell people in the disability community all the time that I work with, I say that uh, you've got to come to a point where you love yourself and um, and 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 work around that uh, because that's the most critical thing. For sure. Other people can love you, but you've got to love yourself. Definitely. Um, and um, so that's just my general advice to people in the community. But let's start with you. What's your questions and so forth? So I started my channel to destigmatize de schizophrenia. You have worked to destigmatize epilepsy. Can you share with us your journey and your work to destigmatize your health issues? Yeah, you, you use the right word. Uh, I, stig I think stigma is the uh, problem that all of us in the disability community have. People immediately presume that you can or cannot do things. Um, and so stigma is something that we got to try to get rid of uh, it's hard to do, but that's the reason I've been so open and aggressive about my disability and the disability community is to work on the stigma issue. And the more we talk about our situation, the better it is as an example for others. You've done that, and that's great. Your YouTube effort is, uh, has impacted other people out there with schizophrenia, and that's, that's positive. My situation was as I started having seizures when I was 16, my parents uh, felt that uh, they're Catholic and Portuguese. Uh, they felt that it was, uh, they were told by a doctor not telling me that it was epilepsy. And my folks felt that if you had epilepsy, you were possessed by the devil. And so um, they then took me to other doctors. All the doctors said the same thing. Again, not telling me because in those days, as a 17 year old, doctors never talked to you. They only talk to your parents. Uh, it's still true today so, to some extent. Right, uh, right. But um, so I basically, uh, after the doctors all said the same thing, then they took me to witch doctors. And so I went to three different witch doctors and they all did their hocus pocus and nothing really worked. Um, and uh, the last one was an interesting one. He said to me, he said, take this raw egg, put it under your arm, hold it there for 30 minutes. And if the egg turns black, then you've got rid of the evil spirits. Well, the egg never turned black, so it was it didn't work. Um, but then I went on to college and, and uh, ultimately decided I want to become a Catholic priest. Um, and when I graduated from college, that was a big issue because I was student by president, I was staying senior, and entering the Jesuits would have been a big thing. Right. Uh, but then I went for my physical and, and the doctor asked me, have you ever heard the word epilepsy? And I said, no. And he said, well, uh, it's what you have. And he said, the good news is 1964, uh, you're uh, 4F, which means you can't serve in the military. Um, and the bad news is that the Catholic Church canon law established in 400 AD said, if you have epilepsy or possessed by the devil, you can't be a priest. So I was denied entry into the seminary. I struggled a bit because 
uh, all the people that have told me they wanted me to um, work for them and so forth, uh, I would call and uh, I never got beyond the first uh, visit or the first exchange of letters. And I finally realized that it was because I marked the word epilepsy on all the applications. In those days, prior to the ADA, uh, you had to say that today, employers cannot ask you about a disability. Uh, but anyhow, so I I um, got rejected, 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 and I started to feel sorry for myself. And um, I felt that um, God, the church, my family, uh, all had turned against me, and I became suicidal. I drank, drank a lot, and on the day I was going to do the dirty deed, um, a voice came over me and said, there was a merry-go-round at the bottom of this hill in Griffith Park in Los Angeles. And the voice came over me and said, you're going to be just like those little kids. You're not going to let anybody or anything stop you from doing what you want to do. Um, that turned my life around. Um, I got my mojo back. Um, after a couple of weeks, I went to live uh, as a result of a priest setting this up. I went to live with Bob Hope and his family. And Bob Hope is a famous comedian, as you might know. So I went to live with his family, and he was fabulous to me. I mean, he talked about um, that you know, ministry, you think of ministry, it only can be practiced in a church. You're wrong. A true ministry is practiced in sports, entertainment, and so forth. And you belong in politics. Hadn't thought of that. So I wrote a letter to my congressman, got a job. I went to work for him for 13 years and got elected when he retired. And then I was able to do something in regards to disabilities. Um, so that's quickly my life story. Uh, I've been very fortunate. Uh, I've been blessed to have all these opportunities. I've had the negatives, but I've had a lot of positives. I still have seizures. As a matter of fact, last week I had three seizures. But, um, you know, it is, I accept what I have as long as I can do um, uh, mostly what I want to do. I have to be careful and so forth. But you know, I, I always say that I'm looking down at the grass and that uh, is uh, a positive for me at my age. And so I'm very blessed. So that's my background. Yeah, wow, that's an amazing story. Uh, yeah. Could you share with my viewers uh, some of your groundbreaking work in sponsoring the Americans with Disabilities Act? Sure. Um, after after I got elected, uh, I then wanted to start doing things to help out disability, not knowing that we didn't have our basic civil rights. So um, as a result of not having our basic civil rights, there wasn't um, many laws that you could put into effect to help us. So I started to realize that at the same time, President Reagan was uh, in office and he had a team working on it. A lot of grassroots people all over the country working on it. I didn't know any of this until I started getting into it. Uh, but then I put in legislation um, and when I put it in, it was towards the end of a congressional session and I got, I think, 50 co-sponsors immediately. Because people would say to me, look, I, I see the bill that you're uh, wanting to put in. Um, I don't like the way my mother, my father, my brother, my sister, next door neighbor, whatever, uh, is being treated because of their disability. And so I think something needs to be done and, and I want to help you. So then the Congress ends and I, then I put it in in the next Congress. And I think we got a hundred and some uh, uh, co-sponsors then. Um, and but the leadership, I was uh, the Democratic whip at the time, majority, majority whip, which is the person who counts the votes for um, the Democrats in the House of Representatives. Mm -hmm. And so I was the third ranking and the speaker calls me in and says that the bill that I'm pushing um, is too big, uh, it impacts too many people and the uh, country would revolt. And um, that he asked me to break it up and so forth. And okay, he got elected to speaker. I got elected to whip. I felt I had uh, backing of my colleagues. I was very close to him, so it's not a negative. But I just said, no, that uh, it's, it's what needs to be done and I'm gonna keep pushing it. So then he assigns it to a bunch of committees 
um, and a bunch of subcommittees, which was an attempt to slow it down. And then what we did was uh, to strategize and we picked the subcommittee that was the most favorable and the committee that was the most favorable and just kept knocking them down. The last one we did was transportation. And we won that one by a 21-20 vote. And um, that's because Greyhound and motor bus owners were adamantly opposed. And so we ended, we ended up winning because we offered amendment. We gave them, I'm not sure specifically, Stephen, but basically we uh, gave them 15 years or 20 years to uh, uh, be able to comply. Because I felt that with technology, once there was a law passed, people would then go after, how do you make buses accessible? And sure enough, nowadays, if you see a bus, um, they bow and scrape. They go down to let uh, people in wheelchairs or the elderly get on the bus and so forth. So we were right about the fact that just pass the law, get it there, and then people are going to find a solution. But it took, that was a big fight. And once we got it, um, we were able to put it on the House floor at, at one uh, by wide margin. And of course, the public didn't revolt. Um, uh, uh, and and so we have a lot of things to do yet. We can talk about that later. Could you tell us a little bit about the Coelho Center for Disability Law Policy and Innovation at Loyola Law School, Los Angeles? Yeah, the, what I decided, Stephen, is that I've been doing a lot of work in, and I had uh, raised money, given money, to different uh, schools to do ex things like uh, political management at George Washington University and, and uh, public policy at University of California at Merced and, and different schools like that. But then I decided that um, I what I needed to do was to establish a center that would have an impact, aggressive impact in regards to disability uh, across the board. And so I interviewed several colleges ended up going to Loyola because that's where I graduated from. And they helped me at a critical time when I was suffering. And I felt I owed them that, but I didn't do it until I knew who the head of the law school was and whether or not he would be uh, supportive. Michael Waterstone is um, uh, a renowned uh, figure in, in epilepsy law, excuse me, in disability law uh, across the world. So he was the right person and so what we do there, there's a lot of projects. The one is my favorite, which I'll talk to you about, is that um, I think that it's important for us to get people with disabilities on state and federal courts. So what does that mean? We got to get people with disabilities into law school. We got people with disabilities into law firms and so forth. So what we do is we recruit people with disabilities to um, that are interested in law and everybody has to have a disability. Age is not the issue. Uh, it's everybody has to have a disability. And we did 15 the first year, 15 the second year, 25 the third year, and we're working on the fourth year now. Uh, but it's basically to develop interests, help them all the way through the process. Um, and, you know, we won't get everybody on a court, but uh, we'll get some on courts. And, and others, what they'll do is to go into business or go into um, some type of organization uh, and be a lawyer. So that's our main goal. We do a lot of other things, but that's the one I'm most proud of. It's called Quello Fellows. And um, so that's what we do. That's amazing. That's great. What do you think we could do better as a society to educate and destigmatize mental health issues? Well, first off, um, those of us with a disability. Uh, have to be uh, positive about ourselves and willing to talk about it. In the mental health area, um, families basically have kept it quiet. Um, and that was true in my epilepsy. But in the mental health area, uh, families kept it quiet because there was a stigma attached to it. And so what we need to do is we need to talk about it. We need to do, you know, what you're doing and what I do. And that is to talk about our disability, destigmatize it. And, and, and we're working also on making sure that movies and TVs uh, programs have people with disabilities in them. And you'll see now, there are quite a few uh, people with disabilities. We're not looking for actors who act like somebody with a disability. We want somebody with an actual disability 
uh, playing the role and so forth. And that's happening more and more. Um, it's the way that uh, people of color made their uh, entree in, in getting the movies and TV. I can go through examples, but same thing with women, same thing with gays. And so we are at that stage. We're the last ones that come up and we're at that stage that we need to get more people looking at all our disabilities. Mental health um, has, uh, what has happened, which is great, is that you have uh, sports figures um, who were, um, you know, people perceive macho and there's nothing wrong with them and so forth. You have these sports figures who are now saying they have mental health issues. Um, that's so positive because they are success uh, in what they do. Uh, but yet they have a mental health issue. Uh, that's the st destigmatizing that we need. And we're talking about um, NFL football players. We're talking about basketball players. We're talking about tennis stars. We're talking about Olympic stars. But all these people now are starting to come out talking about their mental illness. And that's critical for us to get there. I completely agree. Yes. Do you have any words of encouragement for those facing stigmas due to mental health issues and other disabilities? Well, as I said earlier on, um, I think the most important thing is for us to uh, love ourselves. Um, if you can't love yourself, then people are not going to be receptive to you. Um, and so, um, you know, I always tell people go in front of the mirror and, and talk to that person in the mirror. That person in the mirror is the only one who knows the truth. Nobody else does. And, and if you're lying to that person in the mirror, that person in the mirror knows you're lying. And so it's it's being able to talk about what is troubling you, what, what is wrong, and see if you can make changes and so forth. But it's acceptance of who you are. There are things I can't do because of my efforts. I can't drive an ambulance. I can't fly a plane. I can't, you know, it's a lot of things that I can't do. But you know what? There are things I can do better than a lot of people. And so... I stress the things I can do and ignore the things I can't do. Um, and so it's acceptance of what you're about, what you can do and so forth. Um, and that's, you know, I, and I, I've gone through your video, your clips, and what I pick out from you is that you're willing to talk about uh, your schizophrenia. Uh, that, that is very important. And you, you got it on uh, YouTube and so forth, and that means other people can watch it. And I've seen the responses where people have said they appreciate you being so open, it's impacting their kid or, or whatever. But that's what it takes. And it's, it's tedious, it's long. But I tell people, look at uh, people of color got their civil rights in the 1960s. I don't think any of us can say that they're totally integrated and there's no problems. Uh, it's the same thing with women. They're struggling to, to uh, become involved in businesses and be CEO or on corporate boards of the gay community and so forth. So each one of these groups have had problems they've had to work at. The same thing with us. It's not going to happen overnight, but we got to keep pushing. We got to keep the one good thing is that, you know, we have a president of the United States today who has a disability and and he stutters and people uh, immediately assume that he isn't as competent as uh, other people because he stutters. What they don't know is that stutters, when you get to a word that you can't say, you automatically train yourself to change the word, change the thought so you can keep on going. People perceive that as a weakness. It isn't a weakness. And so it's it's Biden being out there and governing this great country of ours. Um, that is a huge plus for us in the disability community. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And often people with disabilities may think they cannot have a career. Do you have any advice for those people with disabilities that might say that? Yeah, I think the issue here is we're just like anybody else. Um, a career isn't going to pop up and you get it. Um, you have to work at it. You have to um, accept what not only what you want. Sometimes what we want is not doable. And that's true with people without disabilities. So it, we're no different than other people, but it's basically, what is it that, what is your dream? What is it that you really want to do? Then you need to go for it. You need to, uh, and, but it comes down to you accepting who you are, what you can do, and then going for it. Um, and as I always say, it's, we're no different than somebody else who doesn't have a disability. 
they want to have a job, they want to do the same thing. And so we just have to learn that we have to be honest with ourselves as what we can do and then go for it and, and expose uh, uh, prejudice and, and stigma. Just go for it. Yeah, I totally agree. Uh, before we end, is there anything else you'd like to say? No, I did, except I would say this, and I said it a little bit already, but we need more people like you, Stephen, who are willing to talk about their disability. And we need more young people because uh, a lot of young people keep their disability hidden if they can. Um, and if they can't, uh, they are reluctant to participate in things. And we need people, young people in particular, uh, to be positive about themselves and 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 then set the stage for others that follow them. Uh, you know, people my age, we already got prejudice. We already cemented in on our views and all this stuff. But young people, you have such a future ahead of you. And and if we can get more and more people to do what you already do, and that is to educate about your disability, educate about schizophrenia, and say, look, at, I can do X, Y, and Z. Um, and I get depressed and I do this, but I am okay. And I and that's what the message I get from your clips is that yes, you get depressed, yes, you have some problems, but you're okay. And you've said that you're not like you used to be, but you're happy with who you are now. That whole message right there is key for us to succeed. And so you're doing it right now and you're talking about it, and that's what's going to help us. Well, thank you, Congressman Corla, for all you have done and continue to do for people with disabilities. And thank you for taking the time to speak with us today. Okay. You're an inspiration as we work to destigmatize mental health issues and other disabilities. Thank you, Stephen. Good and luck to you. you. Oh, sorry. Stay in touch, all right? For sure. And thank you for watching. Okay. Please check the description below for links to support and learn more about the Koala Center for Disability Law, Policy, and Innovation at Loyola Law School. I hope you all have a happy and healthy rest of your day and hope to see you in the next video. Bye. Thank you.